and filmmakers of, of Jim, Jim's ilk that mm. come out of you know YouTube and having yeah. done movies. And what I tell young filmmakers <laughs> is I tell them to utilize YouTube because you want to get a response to what you create. You can't create something in a vacuum and say, oh, I did a great job and my four friends loved it. Yeah. We, we make movies for the masses. Mm. Get it out there as young filmmakers, learn and get feedback from places like YouTube, and then go on to do your next projects. Mm. So what is the balance between having creativity and a natural flair for it and being taught the technical side of it? Do you think it's possible to go into filmmaking with just the natural instinct, or would you push people to do, have the education for it? I would push people to go into a broader education. I think filmmaking, it, while it uses technology, it's not about the technical crafts. I tell people when you go to college, take history classes, take philosophy classes, learn about people. We make movies that are about people. Unless we understand people, it doesn't matter what technology we apply to it. You know, I, for one, knew very little about technology going into actually working on films. However, as I began to work on films, I embraced learning about it. I think one of the great opportunities with filmmaking is that every film presents a new learning opportunity. Years ago, when I did Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, it was one of the first times I ever worked with visual effects. But I immersed myself then in learning about it. When I then went on to do Dick Tracy, working with Warren Beatty and Victoria Storaro, who'd done a number of movies, I was suddenly the visual effects expert. <laughs> so it, it created that balance. But nothing replaces storytelling. Nothing replaces understanding human psychology and, 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 and people and history and social issues and all of that. Mm. I was wondering if you've ever snuck a prop or, a, or an item of clothing or a person into the background of a scene before, just, just for your own personal amusement. I, I've never, when you say hidden people or snuck people in, <laughs> I've never snuck people in. But when we were filming Titanic and we were doing the sinking sequences mm -hmm. and the stern goes up to vertical, hanging there is my wife and my eight-year-old son. Amazing. They're, on, they're, they're right there to be seen. And when we were filming that, that, that scene, uh, it was the first night, and I sort of did this because I wanted to sort of illustrate to everybody that I felt it was safe, that we had this giant teeter-totter mm -hmm. going up to vertical. Well, what happened was the safety cable that we needed to lower it back down broke, and they were stuck up there oh, no. for an hour and a half. And I'm now trying to look all calm and nice, and not only am I worrying about all the stunt people and everybody else we have up there, but my wife and my son are up there, and... Jim just kept filming. He did, it didn't bother him. Yeah. We're now behind the scenes trying, okay, let's reattach it and pull it back down. And we've got everybody down safely. But so my son and my wife are in that scene. Amazing. Such One that answer. was snuck in on me was in, uh, if you've seen the, the film, there's a gentleman who falls and hits the propeller mm. at the end. Well, Digital Domain created a virtual digital version of me, and I'm the one who hits the prop no and way. goes into the water. That's they didn't brilliant. tell me that until later. They said, yeah, we want to give you a pounding, so they, <laughs> they did. How long after the film was made did you realize oh, that that was They you? told us in post-production when we started watching the shots coming <laughs> back in visual effects, hey, John, yeah? That's you. It is? <laughs> I'm going to have to watch so much more closely. Now you'll never, you'll never recognize me, but they all know, and they all get a chuckle out of it. Well, I know now, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy that when I watch it again. <laughs> Finally, my last question is that it, it's been 100 years since the Titanic sank and it's been 15 years since the, the movie came out. And I was only five when the movie came out. So I only saw the film at the beginning of this year for the first time when my brother realized, you, you've not seen it? How have you not seen it? And he booked me a ticket straight away. So I'm, I'm kind of the new generation that's seen this film and I know that I'm going to show it to the generation below me. So I was just, when you were making the film, did you know that you were making a classic, that it was going to be this huge? Two separate questions. We, we didn't know that it was going to be this huge. Nobody could have. But we believed that we were telling a timeless love story. And that our hope was that generations to come would discover it down the road. We never knew that we would have an opportunity to release it again on the big screen for your generation to go see. But one of the reasons we did do it was exactly that. When we realized that we could do it, it was to let you experience it up on the big screen, to let your generation experience in the homes on Blu-ray, not on VHS that has been out and antiquated. Nobody has VHS players anymore. So this is an opportunity for you to bring it into your home, for you to share with your next generation. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing more thrilling as filmmakers to have that opportunity.
Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to see it again in the cinema because I thoroughly enjoyed it when I saw it. So. I, I am so glad to spread the word. Of course I will. I That's what I'm doing now with the, the video. So. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for meeting me. And vice versa. <laughs>